Good morning, everyone. It's about six in the morning here on Evie, and it is freezing outside. And I'm happy to say that I have all the parts I need to fix the engine. So a couple weeks ago, I got the starter motor. Uh, I'll show you that clip there. All right, guys, we're gonna unbox the new starter. So I paid 117 US for this and about 60 bucks for shipping. And uh, pretty sure the starter motor that I have already works. <laughs> but uh, it's good to have a brand new one because you always need spares. So let's have a look and see. I'm just hoping this is the right one. <laughs> Apparently it is. It said Yanmar 2GM, 2QM20 on it. Oh, it's like Christmas time. I love sailboat stuff. All right, so this is an API Marine, quality Marine products. This is the box came in right here. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's take a look and see what she looks like. So this is, oh yeah. It's a little, a little smaller than the other one actually. Um, the other one was much bigger, the Yammer one that I have. Uh, but she looks good, look at that. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> Brand new starter motor for my Yanmar 2QM20 diesel marine engine. Let's get her installed. I managed to get my injectors last night. They came in the mail. Ooh, look at that. Brand new injectors. Now, injectors, uh, these are... These are not Yanmar injectors. They're they're another company, uh, but I think they're just as good. The, all the reviews online seem to be seem to say they're okay. Uh, I found a, a company called Hoy Tractor, and Hoy Tractor is a company in Iowa, and uh, they gave me a really good deal on these injectors. If you're gonna buy brand new Yanmar injectors for a Yanmar 2QM20 engine, it's gonna cost you, I don't know, 800 bucks or so for two. And then you need the copper insulator and the, the plastic insulator washer thing for inside the injection area and the engine. Those are like two bucks or something. Anyway, Hoy Tractor gave them to me, for both of them, 289, which is a great deal. Very happy about that. I also got another belt for the alternator. Uh, I got some some of these uh, things you can use to squirt fuel into your... When you're bleeding, a, the Yanmar 2QM20 does have a bleed switch, a little bleed pump that you go up and down, boop, 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 and uh, it works pretty well. But what, what has happened here is, the previous owner had tightened the bleed screw to the point where it's stripped. So I had to enlarge the thread and put another screw in there. And it's a little bit long, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to unscrew it and, and do it. So I find that these, if you fill them with diesel, you can kind of squirt diesel into the, the lines. And it's a little unorthodox. I'm sure people online are gonna be like, what are you doing? Also as well, so when I took these injectors off, the, the bolts were basically hand tightened. So the guy who worked on the engine last basically either forgot to tighten them or was worried. And I, I do recall reading somewhere in a forum that if you over tighten the injectors, it can lead to big problems. So got myself a torque wrench, which will, I can uh, tighten the injector bolts to spec as well as the, as well as the starter motor to spec as well. Cause if you, if, if the starter motor bolts are too loose, you can actually damage the whole engine, right? Cause the, the starter motor will leach forward and the gears will engage on that big, huge uh, gear on the front of your engine, strip it. And that means you'd have to, to change that. And that would be a huge pain in the butt. So it's a little early here. Uh, you're probably asking Michael, what happened to your saloon? Well, <laughs> uh, I've been working hard lately and Having a bit of a sore back, um, just because you know the the these saloon cushions right here they're very thin, right? So I went out and got a massive piece of foam, 
and I cut it and put it in here. And this is like memory foam, so it's just nice when you're lying down at night. Ah, uh, it's great. It's a little windy out today. You're probably gonna hear the sounds of ropes rattling. Hear that? Now I could probably go out and fix that, and I should and will, but I've been listening to it all night. For some reason, I don't know what it is. You tie off the the halyards and the wind kind of changes and then you get this rattling halyard thing. Listen to it. I'm gonna put the microphone closer. Ah, oh, it's, it's just brutal. It's been windy the last couple days. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this diesel engine running today. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, oh, a little update on, on the situation with uh, these the problem from last video got you know i was freaking out a little bit I had someone look at it and they're claiming that uh you know it is an old boat and it needs work and but it's i'm in no immediate danger and i can sail with the way it is right now uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna think about that a little bit more that'll be a future video but for now we are gonna get this engine going the most important part of any sailboat is your engine and the reason is uh, second is your hull, third is your sails. Uh, the reason is, is because the engine can get you out of any situation. It supplies you with power, you know, you can maneuver, get in and out of the marina. It's very important. So let's go over through what I've done to this motor so far. So, uh, ordered new injectors, got a new starter. I've installed new fuel lines. Now I literally reached into the area to, to check on the fuel line and it just crumpled to bits and diesel started spilling out everywhere. So very glad that that happened here and not out at sea. Like I did 700 nautical miles with this engine last season and the engine worked fine until I literally, the very last sail I did from Toronto coming in, I was on the side, I started the engine and she died and she would start, but only in full throttle. So. I flipped the injectors upside down out of the engine and only one was spraying. So I ordered two brand new injectors. We're going to install them today and I'm pretty damn sure this is going to this is going to fix this engine. So let's get into it. This is the sound of winter live aboard. <laughs> All right, so just a disclaimer uh, the boat's, a, the boat, you know, I, the reason I haven't uploaded videos is, uh, the last couple weeks is just because I've been working heavy film hours, right? So it's hard to do anything. I, and the boat is a little messy. And my, 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 my mother, and she's, she's, she's going to be like, Michael, the boat's a mess. And it is, guys. So just so you know, the boat's a little messy. And I totally forgot to tell you guys, uh, I took, I took off the hydraulic backstay. Now the hydraulic backstay is what tensions your, uh, the rear stay, the aft stay, and tightens the mass so it's so you can get better shale, sail shape. And uh, I managed to pull it off and I sent it to a company in Scarborough over here called uh, Go, Go Hydraulics. And the buddy wanted a hundred bucks to look at it, Jesus. So anyway, these things are very expensive little tools. Little, it's like a, it's like a hand crank, yeah. Doot, 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 and it tightens your your back stay, so you're, you get better sail sail shape. And the buddy, uh, he is currently looking at it, so that's being fixed. And what what else was there? It was something else here. Uh, whew, man, I've done a lot. Oh yes. This is, this is what I've been up to as well. Like I get home from work and I'm like, what am I gonna do today? Try to get things accomplished. Cause it is March now, it's gonna be warm soon and I'm out of here. Okay, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm taking this boat and I'm sailing to the Caribbean. All right. So I, I put uh, LED strip lights. Th these were originally fluoro tubes, you know those 220 uh, tubes you put in there. These ones I've now converted to LED. Check it out. And Woo! Ah, look at that, they turn red, which is really cool. Uh, I found a lot of times I'd come in, I'd be, look at that, oh yeah. And I even got one over the kitchen. Whoa, look at that. Ah, so I can switch them into red now. It'd be kind of cool to have one button where you push it and they all go red, but I, I kind of looked into this, this, the wiring schematics for that. It would have been 
kind of a pain in the ass to do that. I would have had to rerun wires onto the headliner and the whole deal. So, eh, uh, this is fine. And the reason I have the red lights is because basically, uh, you know, when you're, when you're at sea, you're going to a destination. I'm at the helm. I'm a single hander. So a lot of the times I'll put it on autopilot. I'll come down below to make tea or coffee or a meal at sea. And uh, you go inside and it's very bright and you're sailing at nighttime. You go out, you can't really see anything. And in my opinion, it's a good idea to have red lights in your interior so you don't ruin your night vision. And that's why I've installed these wonderful LED lights. Plus it, it saves power. As you can see, I got the solar charger right here. And this is a great little solar charger, uh, Morningstar one. You can check on the volts. The volts are, are low right now just because uh it's it's been cloudy the last couple days you know this is the victron one anyway all right so what are we going to do to install these injectors right now what temperature is it? let's take a look at the temperature so it is oh look at that two degrees so literally 10 minutes ago before the sun came up this said minus 10. so <clears throat> usually i would go out and i would check to see if i need to turn the bubbler on because a Oh, uh, a layer of ice usually forms in the mornings and can damage your hulls. Hull. And uh, right now I can kind of see out the little little space there that there's shimmering water. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. But what do I need to do to get this engine ready for injector repair? Because this engine will start today. I'm telling you, I've thought about this. I've looked into it. And I really hope this fixes the problem. Because if it's not the injectors, it's the fuel pump. <sighs> so, <sighs> what do I gotta do to get this started? Okay, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna take the stairs off here. We're gonna remove this cowling and get access to the engine. And I'm gonna put some heater, a heater onto the engine, just get it nice and warm. And we're gonna start working on installing these injectors. <laughs> All right, so what I've done here is uh, I put a heater on the block. What we have here is a Yanmar 2QM20 marine diesel engine. And uh, I've put the heater for the last half an hour while I had breakfast and did the dishes. And what I'm gonna do is we are going to install these new injectors. So right here uh, is where the, this is the injector here there's one here and there's one here so what we need to do is remove those injectors and replace them but first what we're gonna do is remove this fuel line this is a fuel line this is a fuel filter here the secondary fuel filter we're gonna remove this line so that we have access to the injectors. All right, so let's remove these. I'm using a 13 mil socket. I'm gonna take this fuel line off here. Let's get her loose. The rest can be done by hand. All right, so it's not spraying. So that means that the, the fuel pump's bad. Even though I can get fuel out of the fuel line, like when I'm turning the motor over, there's fuel coming out, it's just not spraying on the injector. So, of course, right? I think what I'm gonna do, I mean, it's possible there's air in there, but I've, I, you know, I've, I've expended a huge amount of effort trying to make this injector spray and it's not spraying, which means it's the fuel pump. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is, I know these injectors work because they're brand new. So I mean, I'm just gonna install them and try it again and see if it works. Let's see what happens. All right, so let's continue on. Uh, this is the injector seat right here. And it just fits into this little hole. I got a mirror here so I can see in there. Um, just gotta get it, I just gotta get it to seat in there. 
how can I do that? Uh, let's see, where's the injector itself? So essentially it's gonna go with something like that. So in order to do that, <laughs> I think what I'll do, this is just gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, so I'm not gonna freak out just yet and say that the fuel pump's gone. And the reason is I just talked to Hoy Tractor, a nice guy from Texas, <laughs> get your tractor. Anyway, uh, and he's, he's saying bleed the fuel pump on the fuel pump side. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the injector, I put it back on, I'm gonna turn the injector upside down and I'm gonna try bleeding the fuel pump on the fuel pump side from the bleed nipple. All right, let's give that a try. All right, so I can't get any any of these injectors to spray. There's there's high pressure diesel coming out of the fuel line, but no spray. They were spraying before. Uh, the guy on the phone did say that because they're so new and tight. So I think the last resort here, before I move on to the fuel pump, is going to be to install everything to spec, bleed the system, and just try and start the engine. So I'm gonna give that a try now. So, we're installing this injector here. She's tight on there. Okay, now I just gotta use this tool. This is a torque wrench. Unfortunately, the specs say 14.5 pounds per square inch, and this is 20 and above, so <laughs> what a waste of money. Jesus, it's frustrating. All right, so let's put, uh, Let's put this whole, these new injectors in and just try and see if this engine runs. Cause maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Be careful, there's lots of dirt here. All right, so, all right. So we're gonna put these bolts on here. Pew, 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 pew. And we're gonna torque it down. I'm gonna go for 20. It says 14.5, but you know, what can I tell you? Uh, at least it won't be over, well, tightened by too much, so. All right, so after two days of working on this bloody engine, place is a mess, diesel everywhere, covered in oil, um, I got the injector to spray. So what had happened is, is I had changed this fuel line right here, and this was loose, so it was getting air in there. So. Uh, with this engine there's a little lifter pump here that where you can print you can lift it up and down and it primes the the engine for uh full of diesel so i went to princess auto and i got one of these hand squeezers and you can see diesel squirting out of there <laughs> so i got the bloody injector to spray which is these engines are very simple okay if there's a spray that means there's going to be ignition and then and the motor will start now will it run good is another question but we're making progress so while i was taking off one of the fuel lines to see if it was blocked i shorted to ground the main uh i grounded out one of the fuel lines on the starter and it heated up the pipe and it blew a fuse so i got to take care of that first and uh i'm going to turn it over and hopefully it'll start because it's spraying so i mean diesels are simple I'm really hoping this works. This is like six months later that this engine hasn't been working. Very happy to finally see one of the fuel system components working. All right, so uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll try to I'll, I'll, when I go to start it, I'll I'll do it on camera. All right. All right. Let's give it some. This is the tester. Come on, baby. Come on. All right. Look at that. Yeah! Woo! I got me a running diesel engine, baby. Oh, it's so good. Just gonna look and see if there's water coming out of the back. Whoa! 
can't see it. You don't want to overheat the engine right now, right? Yeah, I see water. I see a little bit of water. All right. Good. Woo! Okay, so this is great. The engine runs, very happy about that. Now, on my second last sale of the season last summer, I was coming back from Toronto and uh, this bolt right here came loose. There was a huge bolt in there and it came loose and this whole bell housing here came off and this is what, what supplies uh, belt power to the alternator which goes here. The alternator's right there. So anyway, it chewed up the belt and it's a special type of belt and they have a, ver a bunch of them at Princess Auto. So all I have left to do here is Put the alternator back on, put a belt on, make sure I have a spare belt or two spare belts if, is, is good. Um, right now I'm just working on, I, I, when I started the engine there was a leak right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a razor blade and pull off this old gasket. And uh, put some RTV sealant on there. I got some right here. You know, ultra black, uh, high temperature, it doesn't matter if it's high temperature. Gasket maker, Permatex. Um, and then hopefully that leak will be fixed. Then I'll mount the alternator, mount the belt, and then I'm gonna tidy up all these lines here. Look, there's lines everywhere. This doesn't look very good, all right? I'm also gonna put some uh, reflective uh, sound material here to, to, to dampen the engine noise a little bit. But uh, man, I'm just I'm just so so happy that this is <laughs> this is fixed because, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, this engine's gonna be a problem, you know, because engines can be very expensive, you know, and I don't have the extra 14 grand right now for a new engine. So I'm very happy she works and she, she sounds a lot better than before with the new injectors. So I'm very happy, new starter, new injectors. Uh, so things are good. All right, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, next week, uh, there's lots to do. I'm gonna have to work on these chain plates at one point here. I am back to work now, so I'm gonna be trying to upload a video as much as I can, but there's gonna be lots of videos this season, this summer, on the way down south to the Caribbean. Uh, thanks again, guys. Bye for now.